Today we will share with you what the Buddha said about the Eightfold Path at Tengika Mega. <clears throat> you all are familiar with the Eightfold Path. Actually, you are practicing the Eightfold Path when you practice Vipassana meditation. <clears throat> It is from Bodhipakya. Bodhipakya means to, uh, those that belong to the sites of enlightenment. <clears throat> so it is the states that are on the sites of enlightenment. The states that are included in the sites of enlightenment Actually, these are the, the ones that lead to enlightenment. <clears throat> there are altogether 37 of these states divided into different groups. 37 body Bhakiya Dhamma, 4 Satipatthana, Mindfulness, which is established firmly. You are practicing Kaya Nupasana, Vijna Nupasana, Jeta Nupasana, and Dhamma Nupasana for Satipatthana, for Samabhadana, for Supreme Effort. <clears throat> you are developing and for Adivada, causes of accomplishment. And five Indriyas, five faculty, Sada, Viriya, Siddhi, Samadhi, and Binya. And seven Bhujinga, <clears throat> seven factors of enlightenment, Siddhi, Sambhujinga, Dhamma, Vijaya, Viriya, Bhiti, Pasadhi, Samadhi, and Upika, Bhujinga. You are developing. And eight Megingas, <clears throat> eight factors of paths, eight factors you're very familiar Sama Deti, Sama Singapa, Sama Wacha, Sama Gamanda, Sama Ajiwa, Sama Wayama. Sama Siddhi and Sama Samadhi. <clears throat> Sama Diti, right understanding. Sama Singapa, right thinking. Sama Waja, right speech. Samagamanda, right action, Sama Ajiva, right livelihood, Sama Wayama, right effort, Sama Sadi, right mindfulness, and Sama Samadhi, right concentration. <clears throat> so when you practice Vipassana meditation, you try to be mindful of the object at the present moment. <clears throat> you have to make an effort to be mindful of the object. And the effort you make is one factor in the Eightfold Path. That is right effort, Samawayama. When you develop Bhujinga, it is Viriya Sam Bhujinga. So they are the same. With right effort, <clears throat> you try to be mindful of the object and you are mindful of the presently arising object. That means your minds 
hitting the objects thoroughly. Your mind hitting the objects thoroughly is what is called right mindfulness, samasati. <clears throat> when you develop bujinga, bujinga, that is sati and bujinga, the same. When that right mindfulness becomes stronger, you come down and your mind at this far goes into the present object and stay there. So going to the object and staying there for a certain period of time is what is called right concentration, samasamadhi. When you develop bujinga, samadhi bujinga, samadhi sambujinga, the same. The concentration is one factor, and this keeps your mind and is uh, is concomitant on it is uh, concomitant on the object. <clears throat> It does not let them be scattered. Your mind does not scatter and it does not let them go to other objects so that so so that is the nature of concentration. <clears throat> Samadhi. When you gain samadhi, when you gain concentration, your mind becomes calm. The mental interests are subdued. Sensual desire, a will, sloth and trouble, restlessness and worry, skeptic and doubt, all these kinds of mental interests are subdued. When mental hindrances are subdued and your mind becomes stale, you begin to see the objects clearly, more clearly than before. And you see the nature of this Nama Rupa. You see this Nama Rupa arise depending on some condition. And you see this Nama Rupa come and go, come and go. The more you observe immediately, the more they disappear quickly. So you see the impermanent nature of this Namarupa. When you see the impermanent nature, you, you also see their Dukkha nature or unsatisfactory nature. Dukkha. Suffering here means being constantly tormented by arising and disappearing. When you see the impermanent nature and unsatisfactory nature of Namarupa, you also see the anatta nature. That means you have no control over Namarupa. Namarupa arise and disappear as their own accord. And also you see that there are only the Nama that is making note and the objects that is taken as an object. There's no other things which can be called atta or soul or self. That means you see the another nature of things, so seeing the objects clearly and so on are what is called samadhi, right understanding in the context of vipassana. 
when you develop Bojinga, that is Dhamma Vijaya Sam Bojinga, the same. In order for your mind be on the object, to be settled the object, to understand or to see the true nature of the Namarupa, you need one mental factors, one mental state that takes your mind to the objects and put it on, on the mind. In Vipassana, it involves the slight bending or directing in the mind to us. Uh, perceiving the reality of Namarupa. <clears throat> the state that takes your mind and put it on the objects is called right thinking. So among the eight factors, you may have noticed that there is this factor called right thinking. Uh, right thinking does not mean thinking here. His function is to put your mind on the objects. It is a mean of fo focusing so that understanding or wisdom can see the true nature of the Namarupa. So now you know that these factors are working together at every moment of mindfulness you practice. There is right effort, right mindfulness, and there is right concentration, and there is right understanding and the right aiming or right focusing, that is right thought. So these factors are working together harmoniously at every moment of your good meditation, when you observe rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, etc. You have right concentration, right effort, right mindfulness, and right understanding and right thinking. These five factors are called Karagam Meginga. Waka factors, or we may call them uh, active factors. Now there are other three that have to do with the moral conduct, that have to do with sila, the right speech, right actions, and right livelihood. Sama Wacha, Sama Gamanda, and Sama Ajiva. Strictly speaking, they are not present in your mind when you are practicing Vipassana meditation. But these sila group are accomplished when you take precepts. So they cannot be called active factors. So you do not get all these factors you get only the five factors working together in harmony at every moment of your practice of mindfulness. So when you practice Vipassana meditation, you are practicing the Eightfold Path and it is also called Middle Way, Michima Bhattivita. Michima Bhattivita, it is called the middle way because it does not fall into either of the two extremes. Kamasukalikani Yoga, one extreme is indulging in sensual pleasures. 
Atta Gila Yoga that is inflicting pain on on or one own self or one own body, <clears throat> indulging and inflicting. The middle way or middle path, Buddha or rather Bodhisattva discovered by himself, and he practiced and he got the best results of this practice. That means as a result of this middle way, he became the Buddha. Megana Atingiko Sito Buddha said that means the eightfold path is the best among the paths. That means there are paths or roads and there are uh, paths to be reborn in the Brahma realms and so on. Amongst all these paths, the eightfold path is the best because it leads to the eradication of mental defilements. It leads to the extinction of suffering. And Buddha said, this is the only way. There is none other for the purity of vision. And we must make note of this statement. Here, these verses are from the book called Dhammapada. So in Dhammapada, Buddha said emphatically that the Eightfold Path is the only way and there is no other for the purity of vision. For the purity of vision means for the purity of path and fruition. That means for enlightenment. So Buddha said, this is the only way, there is no other way to gain enlightenment. In the Masati Pitana Sutta, Buddha said, Ekaya no Mego, this is the only way. This is the one way. This means the foundations of mindfulness. So, this is the one way for the purification of beings and so on. The what? Ikayana only way is interpreted in, in different ways or it is called one way because it surely leads to Nibbana. It does not fork into branches and so on. Or it is called one way because it was trodden by the best one who was the Buddha, Pichika Buddha, Arahan, and so on. So it also it is interpreted to mean it is the only way. But there are peoples nowadays who do not like this statement. He said, this interpretation taking one way to mean the only way, because they are due that just as there are many roads to reach the city, so there would be many ways to Nibbana, so Satipatthana or Eightfold Path should be just one of many ways. But in this Dhammabra verse, Buddha emphatically said that this is the only way and there is no other. So in order to reach Nirvana, we must practice the Eightfold Path 
or foundations of mindfulness. We can practice the Eightfold Path or the foundations of mindfulness in different ways. When you study as Mahasatipatthana Sutta, in the discourse on four foundations of mindfulness, Buddha talked 21 different ways to practice mindfulness. Anapana, mindfulness of breathing, clear comprehension, mindfulness with clear comprehension, and Datu Manasikara, reflection on material elements, and Iriyabhata, posture of the body, uh, Vedana Nupasana, contemplations of feeling, Chaitanya Nupasana, contemplations of uh, consciousness, etc. Buddha talk 21 different ways to practice mindfulness. There's not just one way to practice mindfulness, there are 21 ways to practice. But whatever the way, it must be foundations of mindfulness. It must be setting up of firm mindfulness on the object. So although in the Mahasatipatthana Sutta, people may argue that Buddha would not have said such things and so on. They cannot say anything when they come to Dhammapada. Because Dhammapada, it is very clear that Buddha said this is the only way and there is no other way for the purifications of vision, for the purifications of beings. And in practice also, we understand that so long as there is mindfulness in our minds, so long as mindfulness is standing guard at the doors of our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, no undesirable mental state, no unwholesome mental states can enter our mind. So we can keep our mind pure by the practice of mindfulness. And the moment we lose mindfulness, the moment mindfulness leaves the doors, then these mental defilements, kilitsa, come in. So through practice, we can easily accept that mindfulness is the only way for the purifications of mind or to keep mental defilements away from our minds. Isiwa Megona Tinyo Dasanasa Wisodia Etinyi Tume Peti Pichata. Buddha said, You follow this path. So Buddha asked his disciple to follow the middle path or to follow this eightfold path. Because only by following the eightfold path, only by practicing the Eightfold Path, beings can attain enlightenment, beings can get out of this samsara, the rounds of rebirth, the rounds of suffering. And Buddha said, this practice is the bewilderment to Mara, the evil one. We can take Mara, to mean kilesa, mental defilements. So by the practice of the Eightfold Path, we can bewilder mental defilements. That means we get rid of mental defilements. We can keep these mental defilements away from our minds 
we can keep our mind secure so that mental defilements cannot enter our minds. It is by the practice of this path, by the practice of middle way. Now the middle way of the Eightfold Path and the practice of mindfulness are the same. Meginga and Siddhivitana are the same. Also Bujinga the same. Although th there are two names to the, this practice, it is just one practice given different names. So whether we say the foundations of mindfulness or just mindfulness or the Eightfold Path, we mean the same thing. So the eight, the Noble Eightfold Path or the practice of the foundations of mindfulness or just mindfulness, we mean the same thing. The Noble Eightfold Path or the practice of the foundations of mindfulness can keep mental defilements away from our minds. And if we are successful with the practice of the Eightfold Path and on maturity of the Eightfold Path, there we come enlightenment surely. So at the moment of enlightenment, yogis will be able to eradicate the mental defilements altogether. That means uh, the mental defilements will not arise in your mind again. It is a practice we should follow, we should do if we also want to keep mental defilements away from our minds. We want to keep mental defilements away from our minds because they produce suffering. Mental defilements are unwholesome gamma. And as unwholesome gamma, they give unwholesome results, painful results. If we do not want to get painful results in the future, we should avoid akusala unwholesome mental states here and now and to avoid unwholesome mental states from what arising uh, in our minds. And, and to prevent them from arising in our minds, uh, we need to practice the Eightfold Path or Foundations of Mindfulness. Etinyi tume pati panna doka santang karisata. Buddha said, Entering upon that path, you will make an end of suffering. If you practice this path, you will make an end of suffering, you will get out of uh, rounds of samsara, rounds of suffering, you will realize Nibbana. And Buddha said, Ekato wo maya mego inyayas sanlak gantana. Having known by myself, I have taught you this path. Now Buddha said, I discovered this path by myself, and then I have taught this path to you. That means Buddha's knowledge on this path is not secondhand, it is his own knowledge. He discovered this method all by himself without the help of 
uh, a teacher. Now you know the Buddha or Bodhisattva spent uh, six years in the forest practicing Dukkara Charya, practicing austerity with the intention of reaching Buddhahood. But for almost six years, he was following the wrong path. He did not get any nearer to his goal during those six years. When he got to, when he got no nearer to his goal, although he had been practicing these Dokrachriya austerity nearly six years, he began to examine his practice. And he found out that that practice he had been doing for almost six years was a wrong practice. Then he searched for a right practice and fortunately uh, he remembered an incident in his life when he was just an uh, infant. At that time, maybe he was not even one year old. There was the plowing ceremony attended by, uh, the, by the king himself in order to promote uh, cultivation. His father, the king, Sododana, and his ministers took the plow and ceremoniously plowed for some time. That, that was a very grand performance. So when the king Sodorana, Bodhisattva father, went to the went to participate in the plowing ceremony, he left his infant son in the care of uh, Nurses. So the prince was put under a tree and a curtain was put around the tree. And the nurses wanted to see the performance of the king, and so they left the infant prince under the tree and went to see the performance. When nobody was around, Bodhisattva, even though he was an infant, sat up or sat in cross-legged position and practiced breathing meditation. And it was said that Bodhisattva reached the first jhana. Later, the nurses remembered about the infant, and so they went back and they saw the prince sitting in meditation. So they reported to the father, the, the king Sodhana. When the king Sodorana came and saw his son sitting in a meditative posture, he bowed down to his own son. Now Bodhisattva remembered this incident and he decided that the, he decided that that was the correct way, correct path. 
So he practiced that correct path, and as a result of that practice, He practiced each full path and he observed the, the five uh, Upadhanakana, the arising and disappearing of Upadhanakana. That means he observed the every phenomena occurring at the six and those. And he realized the arising and disappearing of these five. Uh, Upadhanakanda five aggregates, and accordingly he attained for Arya Meganyana and he became the Buddha. Now it took only one night for the Bodhisattva to become the Buddha. So now you are practicing this, uh, his method developing the Eightfold Path, trying to uh, observe every phenomena occurring at the six and those. Now Bodhisattva practice this, this method and he became the Buddha. Before he discovered this correct way and discover the Eightfold Path, it took him nearly six years practicing austerities because he was on the wrong path. Once he discovered the right path, it just took him one night to become the Buddha. So Buddha said, having known by myself this path, I have taught it to you. Now I have taught this eightfold path to you, and this path is described as the one that removed the thorns of mental defilements. This path is able to remove mental defilements from your mind. Tu mehi kecha madaban ekadaro tatagata. Buddha said, but you yourself must make the effort. The tatagatas or Buddhas are only teachers. It is very important in Buddhism. We do not get anything free. We have to make effort ourselves. We have to work out ourselves to gain enlightenment. So we ourselves must make the effort. That means you cannot practice for me, you cannot practice for your parents. You cannot give enlightenment to other people as a gift. It is impossible. We ourselves must practice. You yourself must practice. The they yourself must practice. That is why uh, Buddhists always rely on their self to gain enlightenment. We cannot rely on any other person. We cannot rely on even the Buddha himself. What we rely on the Buddha is for the instruction, for the true teaching. But after understanding the teaching of the Buddha, we must practice ourselves. Uh, if we do not practice ourselves, we cannot hope to gain any Dhamma results. It is very clear in Buddhism that we must make our make a effort ourselves. We cannot uh, rely on any 
other person for our enlightenment. By this, Buddha recognized the potential in human beings or potential in beings. That is, beings have the potential to work out for their own enlightenment. They cannot rely on any other person for their enlightenment. They are capable of uh, achieving enlightenment if they follow the teachings of the Buddha and do the practice themselves. So Buddha said, you yourself must make the effort. The Tathagatas or Buddhas are only teachers. They can only teach us, but they cannot practice for us just as a teacher at school cannot learn for the students. Teacher can just teach his students. So the students must learn their self, students must practice themselves. And Buddha said, Pati Panna Pamokandi Jayino Mara Bandana. Those who practice this Eightfold Path, experiencing the two kinds of jhanas, will be, will be delivered, will be free from the bonds of Mara. When you practice the Tipitana or Eightfold Path, sometimes uh, you may begin with Samatha meditation, or you may just practice Vipassana without practicing Samatha meditation first. Whichever way you practice, you experience jhana. Now, Vipassana is also called jhana, Vipassana jhana. Path or mega is also jhana. Mega jhana and pala or fruition is also called jhana in a sense. So in that case, vipassana is also jhana, but is also jhana, fruition is also jhana. So Buddha said, when you follow this practice, you will, you will experience these two kinds of jhana. And then you will be delivered from the bonds of Mara. That means you will get free from the bonds of mental defilements. You will be able to eradicate mental defilements. That is why in Theravada Buddhism, practice is important. We can never overestimate the value of practice because only the practice can lead us to gain insight knowledge into the nature of Namarupa and ultimately to eradicate uh, mental defilements. Without this practice, we can hope to get any enlightenment. So we must make effort ourselves. We must follow the instructions of the Buddha so that we achieve our goal of getting rid of suffering or getting out of suffering. So the Eightfold Path that, uh, the Eightfold Path, what we are practicing is not yet Noble Eightfold Path. So we can call it just Eightfold Path or we can call it a Preliminary Eightfold Path. That is 
mulam baginda and poba bagam baginda but at the moment of enlightenment these eight factors arise again and at that uh, enlightenment moment they are called noble eightfold path riya meginga because at the moment of your enlightenment you are changed into a noble person and all these eight factors take nirvana as the object so when yogis are practicing vipassana meditation these eight factors take nama and rupa mind and matter or the five aggregates as object they have not reached the stage of the noble yet but when they reach the stage of enlightenment these uh, eight factors take uh, nibbana as object so what we are practicing now is the eightfold path which is preliminary to the noble uh, eightfold path that is poba bhaga mega preliminary path with the practice of the noble eightfold path Yogi, we attain Nibbana and also when you practice Bhujanga with the practice of, with the development of seven factors of enlightenment, Bhujanga, Yogi may attain Nibbana, Yogi may, uh, Yogi may be able to get rid of mental defilements and achieve the cessation of all suffering. So Eightfold Path, you are practicing and also Seven Bhujanga, the same things you are uh, practicing. So Eightfold Path, you are practicing uh, Need to need to remember. Can you follow me? Sama Deti, Sama Singapa, Sama Waja, Sama Gamanda, Sama Ajiwa, Sama Wayama, Sama Sedi, Sama Samadi. Right understanding, right thinking, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. So all the eightfold part the same as seven bhujanga samadhi. If you develop Bhujanga, that is what we'll call the Dhamma Vijaya Sam Bhujanga, and Sama Vayama is Viriya Sam Bhujanga, Sama Sati Sati Sam Bhujanga, Sama Samadhi, Samadhi Sam Bhujanga. So, with the practice of the Eightfold Path, with the practice of the Seven Factors of Enlightenment, with the practice of the four foundations of mindfulness, all are the same. For Satipatthana, for Samabhadana, for Adipada, for Indi uh, five Indriya, five powers, seven Bhujanga, or eight Magingas, 37 Bodhipakya Dharma. If you understand one, you, you cover everything. That means if you practice four foundations of mindfulness, you are developing seven bujinga, seven factors of enlightenment. If you practice four foundations of mindfulness, you are developing eightfold path, eightfold path. 
So we have to stop our discussion for today. Tomorrow we continue Bujinga uh, uh, or the same you are uh, developing. By developing uh, seven factors of enlightenment and seven Bujinga by practicing Siddhipatthana Vipassana meditation by developing uh, eight full paths, eight megangas, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, continuously and meticulously. May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future. So.